everybody my name is jason i'm kaden i'm jaden i'm nicole and we are the yahoo and the torah youtube channel and actually not just youtube channel we are the odyssey channel we are also back again the bitch you channel we're giving that one another run and see if we can do it but this is the ecclesia and thank you guys very 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 much for joining us and it is a small ecclesia and it is um our family that is here and much love i see the sliders zach and rhiannon um the grandma judith um we are truly truly blessed um having you guys as family and we love you guys and for those in the future that um, come and watch this um we love you too and thank you guys very very much for joining us <clears throat> let's pray let's begin first of Heavenly father we thank you for this day we thank you for the day that we can be alive that we can see the creation that you have created and see the ingenuity genius that you have provided for us and father thank you for your the word and thank you for your son and thank you just for this little ecclesia and thank you for these people father i ask that you will bless everyone who's listening to this father give us the wisdom that you will just pour out on us that we are able to see things and we are able to be intelligent in the ways that you want us to be and father we thank you again for your torah and, and for your son and please let us help your family and father help us to have the right words to say and father Help us to join as the Ecclesia and to be this people that you are after and to have clean hands and a clean heart and a clean mind and just be acceptable in your eyes. Father, we thank you for everything. We ask this in the name of Yahushua. Amen. All right, everybody. How you guys doing? Good. good. Everyone good. all right? Good. Good. You guys good? Yep. Yeah. Uh, Eli got uh, stung by a caterpillar, so he is um, around, but he's fighting dogs right now. Um, how are you guys? Good. Good. And we have our family in here, and so thank you guys very, very much. We will get the show on the road, and um, let's see. I don't have my um, my little Eli homeboy here. I'll but try I will, to multitask. You'll try to multitask on this too? Okay, so we are in what book, gentlemen? Ecclesiasticus or Sirach. Okay, and um, where are we at exactly? Uh, chapter 6. It's been a long week. Do you guys remember anything about last week at all or anything about this? Yeah, last week we were talking about your goods, not to set your heart upon your goods and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's about it? <laughs> um, look, hold on. Um, basically, it was talking about how we should I act, right? That, how it? we should live, how we should basically talk, how we should speak, how we should be steadfast in what we believe in. And everything like that. It's kind of, kind of just like what you would hear in Proverbs almost. Right. Like, right. right. keep your faith. Don't have bad weights and measures. Don't look at what you have in life and think that, like, I'm so good, I'm so great, I don't need anyone, and forget y'all. Things like that. What does the Torah teach us about, like, all of this, like, wrapping it up? 
What is what is the people who keep the Torah look like? What should we look like? Well, they look like people of yeah, right. They're going to live according to the Torah. They're going to take their shabbats. They're going to have zizits. They're going to be peaceable among other people, right? They're not going to start like infighting for a reason. They're not going to destroy people. They're not going to steal from people. They're not going to scam people. Things like that. Yeah, and I guess uh, one of the greatest commandments that we have, I guess, you know, when when Messiah Yahushua was being tested. The greatest commandment is to love our, our creator with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul. And what is the second of the greatest, Jade? Love your neighbor as yourself. And what does that mean? Who is our neighbor and who is our brother? Our neighbor is everyone, our brother or anyone. Yeah, well, who is, who's... Messiah says those who do the will of his father, which those who keep the commandments. Right. And so what are the commandments, Jade? What exactly are we dealing with when we're talking about commandments? We're talking about the Torah. We're talking about the commands that we were told on the mount with Moshe and throughout the entire time Moshe was around uh, through his books from Genesis to Deuteronomy. We were told certain commands we could do, we can do, things we shouldn't do, things we're not supposed to eat and how we're supposed to conduct ourselves. Not all commands were for us. There's, there is a lot of commands, but most of them aren't for us. They're for the Levitical system, how to sacrifice, how a priest should act, what a priest should live by. And it went on and on because there were so many different types of sacrifices that every single thing had its own certain how you had to do it. And that wasn't for us. We're not Levites. We don't sacrifice. Yeah. Miss Nicole, what do you um, think about uh, Torah life? Um, it's good. <laughs> she hates being put on the spot. I mean, it's such the doghouse for this. Um, Jade, what do you think Torah life? Is, is it exciting uh, or is it hard? Is it? It's not, I don't think it's hard. I don't think it's uh, as hard people think it does. There's not a lot you have to, you know, you take, you take Saturday off instead of, uh, would you take Sunday off? You'd take Saturday off and you stay home. You wouldn't work. You would do your cooking the day before. Um, you'd have a few times during the year where you would take off for a little bit. So you'd have to spend time with the honest feast. I mean, it's not a hard thing to do. Right, and it's not technically Saturday either because yeah, we, for those who... we don't have, um, you know, it's the seventh day. Um, uh, Rhiannon's sticking up for Miss Nicole. Yeah, she, she doesn't like this. She gets real timid on this whole thing. Right, Miss Nicole? Yes. Okay. I don't like to be public. You don't like to be public. Yeah. I know, but this is our family. These, these, guys know, are, but... these guys are our true family right here. I know. All right, we got Eli back over here. Eli, how you doing, little Holmes? Good. All right, how's your hand? Um, still burning. Tell me about the um, South American caterpillars, Eli. Um, they, they're they hiding in the bushes where you least expect them. And what exactly happens to you when you get one on you? What happened to you? Um, it starts, like, burning. It starts, like, really hurting. And you. But the thing is, you don't feel it for the first couple of minutes. You don't know you've been stung. Then then it starts, like, burning a little bit. Then the burn just keeps getting worse. And then my fingers start swelling. Yeah, what yeah. else happened? Yeah, your fingers look and really then, huge. And then it starts cramping up my arm. Yeah, and we've had this before where Cade had it, and um, his blood pressure went way off the charts. These things can actually kill you. Um, so what what uh, protective measures are you going to take to uh, not get nailed by furry caterpillars? It's going to be some gloves and some long sleeves. Yeah, long sleeves, shirts, and gloves. Yeah, and they are just... For, you guys have seen them. What do they look like, guys? What are these caterpillars? They look like almost like you would they like look like little birds. Soft, right? like, fluffy They things. would look like little birds almost, like very birds? small. Birds? That's yeah, the one that got you. It was a fuzzy I mean, It looks one. like a bird. It's a caterpillar. <laughs> no, they're, no, they're no, little no. fuzzy things that look like little birds. The ones that Caden got stung with uh -huh. is, was like this little fuzzy thing. This is not a caterpillar, but a bird? No, it's a caterpillar. But, but it, it looks, looks like, like a bird. It, well, it's not big like a bird. It's tiny, uh -huh. but it looks like really soft. Like you could just pet it and touch it. And yeah. But and you can't. Have you guys ever like read? And so Kate just pulled it up. What it looks like here, and uh, I don't know. Does it look like a bird? Uh, maybe. Maybe it's got a little fluffy stuff. Yeah, they, they, they look really soft and fluffy. Yeah, they do look soft and fluffy. But those things are. Um, have you guys ever read what's in these um, caterpillars? These killer no. caterpillars. No, I know the yes. what they say to stop the stinging. A lot of times, if you actually catch one on you or something like that, the uh, people down here they say you gotta kill it, open up the guts, and put it on the wound. That's what they said. That's what they said. That's how they said to get rid of the burn. You can't be right. That's what that's right. what they, I've heard I that no from idea. three or four different guys said that. Really? Yes. And maybe that's a panel. Huh. That's the way they do it down here in it South is, America. Yeah. So do you have something else? Do you know what's on these things? They're just a venomous thing that it says that they do it to protect themselves because but they don't bite of, you. It's just no, their, it's their furry. It's their spines. They have little pokey spines on their, yeah, their bodies. Does, yeah. And so when you touch those, the venom actually goes into you and that causes, it can actually affect all of your organs. Oh boy. And it can, yeah, it can kill you. Yeah, so this is, uh, we have furry caterpillars, killer caterpillars. All right, let's get going. Um, sorry, everybody, that was just the side road. You let your hands look huge. <clears throat> All right. I think they're naturally big. Uh, no, no, they look, <laughs> they look shiny and huge. Okay, here we go. Number six. Do not become an enemy instead of a friend. 
for you shall inherit an evil name, shame, and reproach, even as a sinner that has a double tongue. All right, guys, what do you make of that very first line right so, there? So it basically says, don't become an enemy instead of a friend because you, it will lead to a bad reputation. It basically says, you will get reproach, you'll get shame. This is a thing for a reputation. Okay. Um, what do you guys make of even as a sinner that has a double tongue? Um... I'm not sure what that means. Double, double tongue would be, you know, somebody that's just going back and forth on this or even, like, it could be anything. I mean, honestly. Okay, right, so they're, they're inheriting a bad name as well and shame and stuff like that. Yeah. So, yeah, so if you have double tongue, you'll have bad reputation as well. Okay, do we have another, what are, do you have? Uh, it's, translation exact, it's like almost the exact same as yours. That's not very good. We need a different version. Okay, here we go. That's the King James version that he's reading. That's so the King? It's, so and it's, it's gonna be very like, close. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's going to be like. Uh, I didn't think the King had a version. They did. Did they? They, they pulled did. it out? Yes. Is that in 1611? Yep. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, yeah, in 1611, they also made it from I-E-S-U-S, -S, which they had like Iesus to Jesus. And so they just, they keep changing the name of our Messiah. And our Messiah's name is what, Eli? Yahoshua. Yahoshua. Okay. Okay, two. Do not exalt yourself in the counsel of your own heart, that your being be not torn in pieces as a bowl. Okay. Thoughts? Well, it says don't don't have it's like don't be a prideful person, right? Don't be like extremely prideful, because it you will get humbled if you are thinking you are so good. If you are thinking that you are more than y'all, more than you don't need anyone, and you're you're just the top dog, you're going to get thrown down. Y'all, y'all has his ways of humbling people, whether simple or severe. He will humble people that are too prideful. Yeah, there's always a bigger dog sometimes that will take out the other dogs, right? You're saying top dog. Okay, three. You shall consume your leaves and lose your fruit and leave yourself as a dry tree. Um, that's fairly obvious, right? Um, you, become, you become nothing. You, what you had before, the beauty you had, you will lose. Yeah, absolutely. Four. A wicked being shall destroy he who possesses and shall cause him to be laughed to scorn by his enemies. Okay. Um, take, somebody? Don't be wicked. If you are wicked... Your soul will destroy you. Whoever has a wicked soul will get destroyed, and your enemies will laugh at you. Your enemies, you'll become the laughing stock. Yahuwah always judges the wicked. He always deals with it. And he's, there's always, there's always karma. I know that's. I don't know if that's a right. I think that's, right, actually, I think that's actually say. I know. I don't know like, the right word for it, but there's like that's what it is, right? right Yahuwah right, right. has his own form of right, that. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You get what you deserve. You know. You with what you meet, you will be meted. With what you judge, you will be judged. Um, all of those things, and that's why we need to. Take care of our neighbor as ourselves. We need to take care of others and, and love everybody because, you know, we that's how we are meeting others. Okay. Uh, for a wicked being shall destroy he who possesses. Did I just read that? Yeah, that's oh, four, I'm five. fighting the dogs. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Sweet words. Here's the spray bottle. Sweet words shall multiply friends and a favorable tongue shall increase kind greetings. Okay. Um, sweet words shall multiply friends. That's fairly obvious, right? Nice, you're gonna have friends. Yeah, and a favorable tongue shall increase kind greetings, right? So is that just um, basically saying be nice? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think it's just basically uh, if you have an, if you have a, if you have a good tongue, you see good, you're gonna have good greetings. Yeah. All right. Rhiannon says definitely satanic. Yeah. No, it's like that. <laughs> and Zachariah says just Yah's justice system. Yeah, it is. Yeah, abso absolutely. What goes around comes around. Yah will have his way. That's why we don't want to be on the bad side of him. We want to be on the right side. Six, be at peace with many, but have just one counselor in a thousand. Thoughts? What does that say? Um, in the Sefer, it says, be in peace with many. Nevertheless, have but one counselor of a thousand. Same thing. You guys all say same Yeah, video. basically, you need to be at peace with people, right? But only take, like, advice. Or don't get, like, a whole bunch of people that give you advice, I think is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, so I mean, essentially, if you had 1,000 people and you had one counselor, that would mean there's hardly any counselors for that 1,000 people, right? And so um, I guess I would be, yeah, I just don't take a ton of counsel from outside. Why wouldn't you guys want to take a ton of counsel? Uh, probably because of mixed advice, uh, different answers, and stuff might get confusing. Yeah, possibly. Okay, seven. If you would get a friend, prove him first, and do not be hasty to trust him. Ooh, that's a, that's a really good one. So basically, if you find a new friend, uh, test them, see, see if they're going to be friends. How do you prove a friend? What does that mean, proving a friend? Uh, see if they're trustworthy, right? Are they, are they liars? Are they, are they telling you the truth? Or are they truthful? Or are they in the Torah? Yeah. Well, and, and it's like, well, you can have friends that aren't in Torah. I mean, that, that's the thing. You'll, you'll end up with a lot of friends that aren't. But proving him is 
Is he there when the going gets rough? Is he there when you have the entire village out there with their pitchforks and trying to burn you alive? Is he the guy that's, you know, standing with you along when all of that is happening? Happening, right? And so a lot of people will, especially when people have cash, people will want to hang out with the people with cash. And, they, you know, it's, it's, it's really easy. You get a whole bunch of false friends and people that you really don't want to be around because when the going gets tough, the uh, people get going. Did you have something? I was just going to say, you do want people that are in Torah as your friends, not really the others. Did I say that the wrong you, No, you said you really, you'll have friends that aren't in Torah. Yeah. But you really don't want those people because you don't want to be with the nations. You don't want to no, you don't, you don't want to be with the nations, but I mean, you will end up with people. I mean, that's the part of loving everybody is that you're going to meet people that are not in Torah. The only way to ever grab somebody and possibly that's change nice. their heart is by loving them. And, you know, that's that's what the in Judaism they do. They they hate anybody who's not part of the Jewish system. And you're just this bad boy, and, you know, they can cheat you, they can steal from you, they can do all these horrible things, and it breaks all the Torah, and it's it's not good. All right, so proving a friend is what we should do. And it says, be not hasty to trust him. Why is that good advice? Why should we be very careful on who we trust? Uh, How are your scriptures? I will uh, just say that right there. <laughs> I mean, I, this is what we've had. We have to be very, very careful. We've had a 13-year run of people who said they've, they've done stuff with the orphans, widows, and lepers. And when there are no orphans, widows, and lepers, everybody in the Torah community trusted them. And when I started coming out with it, we had a lot of enemies. And we still have a lot of enemies. And um, there's little people with all in the villages, and they're all trying to tar and feather us. And we're not going to stop. The truth is the truth, and it, it has to be told. Because the problem is... That it will, if it continues on, it will just continue on. And it's it's already gone on long enough. And so it, it needs to be stopped. Okay. Eight. For a certain man is a friend for his own occasion and shall not remain in the day of your trouble. Okay. I actually didn't reread. Re did you guys read this for I did not. You did not? I got some honesty there. Eli, did you read it today? No. You got Caterpillar. Nicole, did you read this? No. I've been Nobody read this? other scriptures all day. You read it? Yes. Jay, this one of five. Wow. <laughs> We got 20% on this. Okay, so it's just kind of said what we just talked about, right? A certain man is a friend for his own occasion and shall not remain in the day of your trouble. And that is really, really, it is so hard to find people that you can actually call friends because, um, you know, I don't know. You know, it's like the people in this chat room, um, Sligers, the Grand, Judith, all you guys, we call you guys friends and we truly mean it. And we, we don't have a lot of friends. And you know, you will find people that they're they're there, like like this says, for their own occasion, um, and it's easy to offend them. And you know, if you're just easily somebody's just easily offended, then they're really not your friend. You and we have a new one, KW. Hi, KW. And be careful of who you choose to call a friend. Yeah, ab absolutely. Yeah, because you know you're giving, um, you know, you're giving all sorts of stuff to them, and you're letting them in. And you know, the, the world is such a a bad place that really people want to. Uh, they, they just don't care. And when your heart is in the way, you have to protect your heart. you got to protect your soul. And um, unfortunately, there's just a lot of turncoats. Zach says, I only have my wife, but no friends apart from you all. Yeah, and, that's it. And the grand says, how many did y'all call friend? How many? Abraham, we know that. I think Abraham, you call Moses friend? I, like I think Jacob, he loved Jacob. I, I think like he, he called talks. Moses friend. I feel like he Moses would have maybe... Moses, had. yeah, Moses is definitely a chum. No maybe, Dave, maybe David. David, no doubt, David. Uh, you think Saul was ever a friend? Mm, I don't no. know. Saul was never. Good. Saul in the beginning of Saul. Saul was good. He did right, but then he had issues towards the. Oh well, yeah, absolutely. At the end, but I mean, at some point, you know, it's a big thing to be called a friend by Yah and to to you know that would be a huge huge thing. Enoch. Enoch. Oh yeah, Enoch. Definitely Enoch. No, probably maybe Noah. Noah for sure, probably. Well, a little bit though, but it's yeah, Enoch, yeah. Methuselah. Methuselah, yeah. I mean, those guys are all tight with Yah. All right, let's continue. Um, and there is a friend, <laughs> are we nine? Yeah. Okay. And there is a friend who being turned to enmity shall cause strife and uncover your reproach. Okay. So that, that's, that's one of these things that is why it's very dangerous to get very close to people. And I hate to say that because everybody needs friends and, you know, a lot of people, um, don't have a lot of friends, but the problem is, is if you end up offending somebody, they can turn and there's really some evil things that people can do. Um, 
and it's just, you know, these are all, I guess this is like the friendship chapter on how to like not have your heart destroyed or heart get burned. This is really good advice so far. Okay, anyone else have anything? Nope. 10. Again, there is a friend, a companion at the table, but shall not continue in the day of your affliction. Okay, so this guy's obviously been burned by we kind of friends. Talk, we kind of talked about this. When you're, when you're at your worst, they won't be there for you. Absolutely. Job's friends. Look at those guys, man. They're, They're terrible friends. Yeah, absolutely. They said beat him as he already beat. And his wife. Yeah, she was just beating him as still. Okay, 11. When you are prosperous, he shall be as you are and shall be bold over your servants. Okay, what is this talking about? When you're prosperous, he shall be as you are. So saying like you're he will basically, bad he'll be like on your side, right? He'll be like by your side all the time when you're prospering, right? But when you're leaving, he's gonna he's gonna separate himself from you. He doesn't wanna share in your trouble, right? But he will share in your success. He will he will take whatever you can yep. whatever you can do. Yep. And then twelve is if you are brought low, he shall be against you and shall hide himself from your face. Which yeah, I mean I don't know how many people ex ex friends we have that, you know, are they hate us now. A lot a lot of people do. It's crazy. Okay, thirteen. Separate yourself from your enemies and be on guard with your friends. Okay, this dude is definitely, the guy writing this is definitely going through some hard times or is trying to um, really clarify how you should find your friends. And, and, you know, this is all really good advice. Um, so separate yourself from your enemies, gentlemen, right. um, and then be on guard with your friends. Again, warning um that you don't want to be your enemies. Why, why wouldn't you, I guess this is a stupid question, but why wouldn't you want to hang around your enemies? Uh, because they're evil. They want to hurt you. <laughs> uh, they have no good interest for you. They are bad people. They do not want anything good to happen to you. Yeah, and they will be there too when you're down. Okay. A trustworthy friend is a strong defense. And he who has found such a one has found a treasure. Yeah, absolutely. And um, to, like, like Zach says, and having Rhiannon, same for myself and my wife. I don't have any other friends and except you guys who are around this table and around our big table. So and that's it. And the says best friends. Yeah. And that's. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Um, okay. 15. There is none that makes up for a trustworthy friend and his worth is invaluable. Can anyone say that's not like super good advice? I mean, or at least like honest, straight honesty. That's I mean, great. If you have a trustworthy friend, I mean, a good friend is going to potentially, I mean, a good friend should risk his life for you. And you should do the same for your friend, all right? And that's what Messiah says that as well. That's how you know who loves you is who will lay down their life for you. Okay. Judas says, fresh experience on burned friendship. At least I thought we were friends. Heart circumcision for sure. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, you know, that is the, you know, it's, it's the thing, you know, it's like sticks and stones will break your bones, but words are the worst of all. And, you know, your heart... It gets so ripped out and people are so cold anymore. They just don't care what they have to say. And um, a lot of people aren't interested in what you are or what you're about. And this is a, you know, a chapter of realization here. Okay. Um, a trustworthy friend is the healing of life. And those who revere Yahuwah shall find him. Okay. Now we're into some, some extra, extra truth, right? Um, a trustworthy friend is the healing of life, which is absolutely, right? When you're down in the dumps, a hug is somebody to say, hey, I, I lit an ear, right? If somebody is sitting there just willing to give you an ear um, and, and, you know, hear your problems out, you know, that's that's worth everything, right? Okay. And those who revere Yahuwah shall find him. What, Guys, what does it mean? Well, whoever, whoever fears Yahuwah, it, I mean, he, it's in mind says it directs his friendship aright. It will... If it's uh that was that Michael W. Smith, as long as the Lord is the Lord of the friendship, they'll always be friends. You kind of hit that. Is it was give close. That, it, give was, it was completely 70%. slaughtered. Yeah, I'll give you that. 70%. You get the point. Yep. <laughs> All right. No, that's very good. Um, seventeen. Is that where we're at? We've read, read that. Read. Okay, seventeen. Um, eighteen. Are you sure we're doing seventeen? Did you finish all seventeen? I don't I don't know know if you get down, it Pedro. Pedro. Sorry, guys. Okay, uh, seven, let's try this again. Whoever reveres Yahuwah directs his friendship well. For as he is, so shall his neighbor be also. Okay, I didn't think I read that one. So whoever, yeah, whoever reveres Yahuwah directs his friendship well. Um, what does that say? What so does that mean? If two friends fear Yahuwah, the, Yahuwah's going to guide the friendship. Guide the friendship, but how would you guide the friendship? How would you, if two people are in Torah, how would that be better than two people out of Torah? Um, because they have laws, they have a bond, they uh, both are, they both know the Torah. 
We, we Yeah, and we both have guidelines, right? We both know that we are to love our enemies. We're supposed to love our neighbors. We're supposed to um, do all sorts of things. And so the people that are in Torah should know not to rip people off and, and mess with you. And, and it's those guys who, uh, <laughs> it really hurts when they do. Brandon says, I've had trust issues with people since I was 11. People only got worse as the years went on. That's yeah, yeah I I can't say that I just have, you know, I can count my friends on my hand. It's, it's, I guess we're all in the same boat. There's just not a lot of true people out there and they run when the going gets tough. And, um, yeah, this is why, again, I appreciate all you guys in the chat room on this. You guys, we know all of you guys fairly well. And so we love you all. Okay. Um, 18. 18. My son, gather instruction from your youth onward. So you shall gain wisdom till your old age. Okay, gentlemen, you, children, youngsters. Yeah, um, we're looking for wisdom and instruction. We're supposed to uh, have it so when we're old, we're wise. Are you guys? Have you guys been looking for instruction? I think so. Yeah. What, what would that look like to youth looking for instruction? Uh, reading the Torah, learning from your parents, um, just reading the Bible. Yeah, I could say that. Okay, and it says you gain wisdom till your old age. That's a good thing because in our old age, it seems like we get kind of fruity. We get kind of we kind of lose our minds a little bit. Um, it's unfortunate. Um, does wisdom have anything to do with being? I mean, what happens? And what do you guys call when you get old age and you, we can't even function anymore? We can't even think anymore. I call it old age. Call this is wisdom past us? Is it gone? Uh, she's, it's a cycle of life. Cycle. It is a cycle of life. But is is wisdom gone when we're that old? I don't think wisdom is gone. No, I would say it's just old age. Old age. All right. Okay. Nineteen. Come to her as one that plows and sows and wait for her good fruit. For you have shall not toil much in laboring over her, but you shall eat of her fruit soon enough. Who's her? Uh, wisdom. wisdom. Okay. And so um, we are supposed to um, come into her like one that plows and sows. You guys know what that's about, right? Yeah. Right. Um, and uh, for you shall not toil much in laboring over her. What does that mean? It's like uh, it's like easy planting, easy cropping. You're not going to sit there and work hard for it, right? When wisdom comes, wisdom's going to come easy. Yeah, and wisdom's going to come because we have asked and we have have gotten. You know, if we're in the Torah, I would hope that we would get, um, you know, wisdom, extra wisdom. We have some crazy bat thing flying around here or something. All right. Anyway, let's head back over here. Um, where are we at? Uh, 20. 20. All right. Half the crew disappeared, probably fighting snakes or something in the hallway. Okay. 20. She is... What is it? We have a frog. Oh, it's just a frog? All right. Sorry, guys. The frogs break through the house. I, I don't know. They, they have, it happens all the time. They go through the dog door. They go through the dog door. They go in the back door. They, they end they up knock, in... His, they knock on my door. They do knock on his door. But yeah, we have a lot of frogs here. Eli, does it does it still make you squirmish picking up frogs, or do you carry them? No, I don't carry them. Jobs. Um, at first I didn't. Mm -hmm. Probably when I was like 12, 11, 12 This year. and now I just pick them up and I like. No, I pick them up and just walk with them. You you sit there and wait. Wait, yeah, give her, give her a high five as I walk by. <laughs> I still right. scream when they jump. Yes. All right. Well, let's continue on. Sorry, guys, we're really going off course here. Okay. Um, twenty. She is very unpleasant to the unlearned. He who is without understanding shall not remain with her. Okay. So those who don't want to learn, those who don't have understanding will not have wisdom. And those who don't look for wisdom, those who do not want to be taught, they will look very, it'll look evil in their eyes. They'll be upset with it. Yeah, and if you don't have wisdom, you are going to end up on the bad road. Um, let's continue on. Okay, 21. She shall lay upon him as a mighty stone of trial, and he shall throw her from him be before long. Should you guys say before long? Yeah, from him ere it be long. Um, okay, let's, let's come so up. I think he's talking about the, uh, the unpleasant person. Right, he who's without, okay, right. She shall lay upon him as a mighty stone of trial, right? That's the uh, dude without understanding. The person who's, uh, who she is unpleasant to. Right, and he shall throw her from before him before long. Because so because she's unpleasant to him, she, he just gets rid of her. Okay, for wisdom is according to her name, and she is not revealed to many. Um, who is she revealed to? Those who keep the Torah. Probably. Those who are looking for wisdom. Those who seek wisdom. Yeah, those who seek wisdom. Okay. Um, 23. Listen, my son. Receive my advice. I am going up over here, right? Yep. And do not refuse my counsel. Put your feet into her shackles and your neck into her chain. 
Okay, so why is it saying that we should become enslaved to wisdom? Because being enslaved to wisdom means freedom from death. Do we not die? We don't die the spiritual death. Yep, that'd be true. Okay, um, bow down your shoulder and bear her, and do not be grieved with her bonds. Okay, do we have bonds with wisdom, or what would be? No, it's not like, uh, see, wisdom is following the Torah. Wisdom is looking for that Yahuwah story. It gives us wisdom when we need it the most. When, we are, when we're talking, we're answering. He'll give us wise answers. And uh, we get that from following the Torah, and it's not a bad thing. We're not under bondage by following the Torah. We're not under trials. It's, it's not like that kind of, everyone says, really hard to do, or it's too burdensome. We, we, it's easy to follow, easy commands. Yeah, but why would why would it say greed with her bonds? Do we feel grieved with wisdom, or how is how is that going to bond us? How maybe because we, we know the truth. Maybe so grieved because we know that what the others don't. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't feel grief blocking the Torah. I, I don't feel grief at all. In fact, I feel um, elation that we're there's a kingdom road. Okay, twenty six. Come to her with your whole heart and guard her ways with all your strength. Search and seek and she shall be made known unto you. And when you have taken hold of her, do not let her go. Okay, what is this saying, guys? You paying attention, kid? No, I'm dealing oh, with the dogs. Dealing with the dogs, all right. Okay, it so says when you find wisdom, hold on to wisdom. Don't let it go. It says look diligently and grab onto wisdom and don't let go. How would you? How would it look letting go of wisdom? What does that mean? It would be falling off the path of the Torah. Stop doing what Yahuwah says and you go and do the worldly ways. You wouldn't be wise anymore. You would you'd be doing things in the world. You'd be getting advice from the world. You would be acting like the world and it's the world is very unwise. Yep, and Solomon may have been the wisest man at some point in his life, but towards the end he lost it. and He didn't have his wisdom because he just went way astray from Yah. Okay, 28. 28. Is it way down there? Mm -hmm. Okay. For in the end, you shall find her rest, and that shall turn out for the joy. Okay. For the end of life, we will we will find rest, and we, we will have joy. We will be very happy. Okay. Then her shackle shall be a strong defense for you, and her chains a robe of esteem. Okay. How is how is wisdom? So basically, the chains we put on earlier, it becomes um, defense for us. It becomes glory for us. How, how, how are we defended by wisdom? Because we are, we do things smarter. We are wiser. We know not what to do. We stay in the path of the Torah, and we don't stray away from this. And uh, Yahuwah protects us as well. It's wisdom and Yahuwah. Yeah, and when we keep the Torah, that brings up a defense for us, a, a at least a spiritual defense that we are not going to be um, potentially as you know in trouble as as the rest. So Torah is life. Okay, thirty. For there is a golden ornament upon her, and her bands are a, are purple lace. You shall put her on as a robe of esteem and shall lay her upon you as a crown of joy. So essentially it's something that was is uh, like kings and stuff have, right? They have the purple um, stuff. You have the robe and the crown. I mean, essentially it's it's be very proud of wisdom. You know, wear it as a, a robe of, of kind of like, you know, you're, it's important that we have it. And when we have it, we need to hold on to it and keep it. We don't want to let it roll. Okay. Um, 32. My son, if you allow, you shall be taught. And if you apply your mind, you shall be clever. All right, great. Hey, this is exactly, this is, this is your guys' verse right here. So if you apply your mind, if you, if you want it, then you will receive it. Okay. Um, yeah, and if you allow, you shall be taught. So what does that mean? How do you, how, what does it look like if you are um, not teachable? Um, then it looks like the world, right? It looks like foolishness. If you're not teachable, you look like the world that doesn't want to hear it. They don't want to listen to what you say. You start talking about the Torah, and they, they immediately turn it off and say it's on the cross and go their way. Yeah. And if you apply your mind, you shall be clever. That's a big thing. We need to be clever in this world. There's too, many, too much crazy stuff, and we need a little more cleverness than hopefully the rest. 33. If you love to listen, you shall receive understanding. And if you bow your ear, you shall be wise. Stand in the group of the elders... And cling to he who is wise. Okay, thoughts. It says, "If you love, if you love to listen, you shall receive understanding." Right, and then it says, "Stand in the multitude of elders, because the elder people are wise. The elder people should have experience. They should have answers. They should have. They should be the people of wisdom and learn learn that wisdom that they teach you." Is every elder person wise? I don't think so. I would say no. I would say they 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 have like wise experiences. Maybe some wise advice. What that, makes a wise elder? A uh, Torah keeping elder. Yeah, that'd be a Torah elder. They may have like good advice on like experience or something they've done before, like where they like grew up in a certain thing or they've been through the situation. They can help you, but as in like wise, as in like the wisdom of the Bible, no, I would not say it unless they were like living the path, walking the way. 
Yeah, they always told me when I was a kid that knowledge is man's understanding where wisdom comes from our creator. Okay, um, let's see. Be willing to hear every worthy discourse and do not let the parables of understanding escape you. Okay, so what's that talking about discourse? I think this is like people... Um, well, I think it's like arguments. Right. I should so, be willing to hear every holy discourse. Be every every like holy matter, every like, like thing is like the Torah, the spirit of the Torah, be, be there to listen to it. Yeah. Okay, and if you see a man of understanding, get yourself to him early and let your feet wear out his doorstep. Let your mind be upon the laws of Yahuwah and consider his commands continually. He shall establish your heart and give you the wisdom you desire. Okay, let's go back to that last part. It, it says if you see a man of understanding, how are you? And it, it, I said, it, how are you going to find this guy first of all? So you find someone who's keeping Torah, someone's wise. I mean, you 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 stumble upon him somewhere someday, I'm sure. But uh, it says basically you got go to him early and like stay at his doorstep until he learn from him. Stay there. So you're supposed to wear out his doorstep with your, you being there. It sounds like those those ninja things where they go outside the little thing the the shallow monks and they stay out there for like weeks on end yeah. and finally they're able to come into the, to their their master or something of the sort yeah and so um it says let your feet wear out his doorstep i mean that means like this you're guy there a lot you're there yeah let it hang out where there is wisdom okay now the last part of this it says let your mind be upon the laws of yahuwah and consider his commands continually that's what the shema is about uh, deuteronomy 6 that is you know um, we're supposed to bind the laws upon our heart, mind, and soul. And um, what do you guys think, as we're ending this, what do you guys think that that letting your mind be upon the laws of Yahuwah and consider his commands continually looks like in your life, Cade? What does that look like to you? Well, it looks like we're doing things that are holy. We're not doing things that are outside. We're not going to steal. We're not going to rip people off. We are going to we are going to live according to how y'all wants us to live. Yeah, what do you think, Jade? What do you think that... Uh, how, how does that look in your life where it's like, let your mind be upon the laws of Yahweh? Do you, do you contemplate them? Yeah, I mean, I'm be thinking about them. I'm gonna be how honest. often a day do you do you think about the law, statutes, and commands? Uh, probably a lot, most, probably most of the day. You know, I'm thinking about what your boss coming up, thinking about what, the stuff I can do, what I can't touch, if it's going to be unclean, if I touch something, or something of that sort. Eli, do you, uh, do you uh, have the laws upon your, your heart? Do you, do you, yeah. Do you think about them daily? Yeah, I think about them quite a bit. Like what? What's your thoughts? I'm um, kind of the same thing as Jaden said, basically. Uh, you don't like being on the spot? <laughs> Never have. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's it. Um, is anybody else, is there anything in the chat room going on, Mr. Gold? Um, no, just the grand said our refuge becomes our dwelling place. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, stop that. <laughs> that's our dog. That's old Jerry. All right, guys. Well, I think that's it, guys. Thank you very, very much for hanging out with us. We love you guys very, very much. Um, if you guys have any kind of prayer requests, drop them in. You guys know how to get a hold of us. And um, I guess we will call that a night. Um, anyone else have anything? Uh, nope. We will be live again on Shabbat, seventh day, Saturday, for those who do not keep the Torah. If you always want to start keeping the guys, it is called Saturday for you guys, but it's the seventh day or Shabbat. And we will be live then at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Eastern time. Okay, yeah. And thank you guys very, very much. I guess this will be it. Um, and then KW says it takes a lifetime to walk the walk and talk the talk. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's not a, um, it is not a easy path. And it's like, you know, it's like the Christians are always looking for the, you raise the hand and you, your life changes like that. And there's an instant change. There's this change that just begins right there. And I guess it could, but then we forget all about the rest of it. And it's, a lot of it is about being studious students of the Torah and, and learning it. So it's always on our hearts, minds, and souls that our, that our lives are dwelling in it and that everything that we do is um, about it. So, yep. Thank you guys very, very much. Hope you guys have a wonderful night and we will see you again later. All right. All right. Shalom. Shalom.